Okay, we're going to get started. Um, my name is Andrew Stevens. I'm a consultant here with IBIS. And today's topic is going to be on mixed mode manufacturing, primarily um, combining both discrete manufacturing techniques and process manufacturing techniques. And primarily what we're going to look at um, isn't necessarily a whole lot of functionality. It's going to be um, primarily what AX2012 um, is, is capable of in this area and how much of an upgrade this is versus the previous version of AX. So the first thing we'll look at <coughs> is just a few setups that are kind of necessary to uh, to be in place for so you can understand uh, exactly how this is working. Um, the first two, both production type and build materials and formulas, um, are two very key aspects that if you're using process manufacturing at all, have to be set up. Um, let me jump over to the application. If I bring up a finished goods product, and these are ones that have already been created. If you're creating them um, from scratch, you would still have to do this um, setup. And these have already been set up, so I'm just going to point out where they are. Okay. On a particular item in this engineer fast tab, there is an option at the bottom in this formula planning group called production type. Now don't let formula planning confuse you. This is not just for process manufacturing and using formulas. Um, if, you're, if process manufacturing is installed, then if you're going to have an item that has a bomb or a formula attached to it at all, this has to be um, selected. And the two options we're primarily going to look at are bombs and formulas. Bombs are traditional discrete manufacturing. Formulas are uh, process manufacturing. The other options you see there, co-product, byproducts, planning items, that's uh, unique process functionality that we won't get into. And then none is obviously if you're not going to attach a bomb or a formula to the item. The next thing we're going to look at is the setup of both bombs and formulas. And what AX2012 has done is it has made this process pretty much identical um, on the formula side and the bomb side. There's obviously some, some differences between the two when you're setting them up. But the process you would go through for setting them up as well as um, most of the information you see in either setup is pretty much exactly the same. Setups are done under this um, engineer tab. There's a section for building the bill of materials as well as a section for building a formula. Now, since we've chosen the production type build of materials, then this is available um, to be selected. If we had chosen formula, obviously it's not going to let you build build materials for it, and it's going to allow you to build a formula. So this is your standard build materials, uh, just like we've seen in any previous version of AX, which um, you create the version, which links the item to a um, to a particular build of materials, and then you would build the build of materials off of that. Same concept for a formula. And this other item that uh, I brought up here is a formula item. And the only differences you'll see here is there's several extra fields when you're creating formulas. There's fields for yield, um, fields for formula size, catch weights, some things that aren't available with um, the traditional build materials. Okay, one other thing, and it, it's sort of a setup and sort of functionality but that I just wanted to point out is batch information, particularly batch attributes, batch disposition, and shelf life of products. 
and this is specific process functionality, but it does carry over and can be used um, with discrete manufacturing. So if you're producing something that you're not using formulas, you're using traditional um, building materials and production orders, you can still use this, um, this batch functionality. And we'll just take a quick look at it. So if I bring up the form that lists all the batch numbers that are created in the system, you'll notice that there are information for the batch disposition, which is just a code that says whether or not that particular batch is available. Um, shelf advice date, best before dates, which are like expiration dates. And then we have a button at the top for batch attributes, which are user created attributes um, for a particular batch. Now these can be changed <coughs> from this form, so once you come into this form you can change them. Um, but it does not matter whether any of these items were created through discrete manufacturing or process manufacturing. The functionality for on, on the particular batch numbers is um, it works in both cases. Okay, that's the only setups we're really going to focus on. Uh, the next thing we'll look at is um, master planning as well as planned orders. And one of the things that, that AX does here is it does not require you to plan batch orders and production orders or discrete orders separately. Um, you can run master planning one time and cover both types of orders. Also, when it is planning um, for capacity, so if you have a particular resource that has limited capacity, yet you have discrete and process type orders, um, they will both get, get planned for and both can consume um, time against a particular resource. Also, on the once master plan is finished and it generates any planned orders, you're going to have a combined list of planned orders. So you're not just going to see all of the planned orders for discrete manufacturing or for traditional um, planned production orders, and you're, or you're not just going to see um, planned batch orders. You're going to see a combined list of both. And if we look at that, If I look at all the planned production orders right now, <clears throat> it says, and I set this up to where it's only going to create from two items we looked at earlier. Um, one item being this 1002 item being a, um, a, a, a an item that would require a batch order and has a formula attached to it, and this 1001 item has a bomb attached and, and would have to be produced through. Um, to a sort of street manufacturing. There is really no difference that you'll notice on this form. The way you would work with it on this form is identical regardless of the type. If you were to firm either of these orders, it would create the appropriate production order or it would create the appropriate batch order. So rather than having two separate forms as we did before, uh, for batch orders and, and production orders, you now get all of those orders in, in one area so you don't have to um, go to two separate forms. It really doesn't distinguish between the two. Okay, uh, talked about the firming process and all the planned orders um, that are generated through master planning and how those orders are identical whether you're creating um, discrete manufacturing orders or process manufacturing orders. Now once those orders are created, obviously you're going to get uh, production orders. AX calls this production orders, or they call the form production orders, even though it combines both production orders and batch orders on the same form. So you have a combined list on this on this form of both the production orders and the batch orders. 
I bring that form up and it's just all production orders. This grid of information is going to contain every order, whether it's batch order or production order. You know, I'm just going to narrow this down so we don't have to look at everything. And what you'll see is we have three orders here, only two different items. And one of those items is produced through uh, traditional manufacturing. It was set up um, with the bill of materials. And it's called a production order. The other one is considered a batch order. Now the one difference you um, can tell right off is that they have different numbers. This is simply based off the number sequence. You can have a different number sequence for batch orders and production orders. You could use the same number sequence so that they would look pretty much identical. Now if you're going to create these orders manually, you still have to distinguish whether it's a production order or a batch order. So if it has a formula attached to it, it has to be uh, produced through a batch order. If it, you just have a bill of materials attached to it, then it's produced through, um, through a standard production order. Okay, now when you go through the process of, of executing these orders and running them through production, there is no difference. They've Change it to where you can have the same default, they follow the same defaults, they follow the same rules. So when they go through production, there really is no difference between um, how you would process one versus how you would process the other. So if you if you have certain defaults set up for your start process, so if these are my defaults for how for what occurs when an order is started. These defaults should match exactly the defaults on a production order, as they do. This, this button, default values, is where you would set those up. If you change it for one type of order, it will change it for both of them. Also, the, the setups that you would do in parameters. Um, for, for instance, um, in parameters you can set up what status an order can be reversed to based on the status of the pin. If you set it up to where an order is in status of report is finished and it can be reverted back to a status of created, then that would apply for both production orders and batch orders. So really the processing for one or in the other, everything's the same. The only difference is when you're manually creating them or if you're going to make changes to um, the components of the bill of materials for the this, for the production order. This bomb option is going to be highlighted, so this is going to um, bring up the production bomb for this particular order. And if you're on a process order or a batch order, it's going to highlight the formula. Okay, the one exception to combining everything. Um, within between um, process and discrete manufacturing is around catch weights. If you're using catch weights, you have to use the process functionality, so you have to use formulas. Um, traditional bill of materials will not allow you to add an item that is set up to use catch weights um, onto that bill of materials. So if you're going to use catch weights um, for a particular product or a particular finished good, then you would want to um, use the process functionality, set it up as a formula, um, and use batch orders for it. Okay. The last thing we'll look at is the reports and inquiries. Um, reporting used to be that you would have to report differently for what you produce through a batch order versus what you produce through a production order. Um, this completely changes, this version of AX completely changes that. All of your reports can be either, um, either specific, can be used for reporting in both the production and the batch orders. And I've just picked out three um, kind of examples of that. The first one is if you look at a particular product, for example, 
or we'll just use the same products that we used previously. So if we look at this particular product, there's this option to see what can you report, what is the most of this particular item if you were to produce in two different reporting streams. So what do you have enough material um, to produce for this item? What, how much of this item did you produce with the material you have on hand? So this form is going to show you exactly what components go into making that, um, the quantities for each of them, and what is this maximum quantity that you can report spinners based on your training report. That report or that inquiry looks exactly the same as it would as it does for the um, for the process item. No difference between those two. The second report we're going to look at is one of the reports in this production section and all of the reports in this production section um, work with both types of um, of orders. Or we're just going to look at production overview. Now on a report, wherever you see this option that just says production, that's kind of the indicator that you can use both batch orders and production orders. All you're doing is in this production field is you would select um, a specific range of, of orders whether they be batch orders or production orders. So if you're using the same number sequence and you have both types of orders within that, within um, a range that you select, and obviously you're going to get a report containing both um, production orders and batch order information. And then the last one we were going to look at is inventory management. Okay, same thing applies in inventory management. Um, in the report we're going to look at is in this bills and materials section. And we're just going to look at a report of um, bill and material lines. Now, what? Now, this report in particular is a little bit deceiving in that it says it's just for bills and materials when really you can report on production types both bill and material and formula. So the wording on that is a little bit deceiving. Once you go into the report, really you can bring up formula. You can bring up a report for formula or bill of materials. Either one will work. Okay. So we've gone through um, pretty much all the pieces to manufacturing, uh, to multi-mode manufacturing. Um, one thing that I was also going to look at was just um, some of the inquiries. So if you wanted to see um, information on just your batch orders or if you want to see information on just the production orders, in the production inquiries is the one place where you're going to bring up forms quickly that distinguish between the two. If we go back to production control, there's a section for inquiries. There's a drop down for production and a drop down for batch. Anything under production is just going to bring up the information for production orders. No batch orders. So everything in this list is just what um, is produced through traditional discrete manufacturing. And that form is identical to batch order overview except the batch order overview shows just what is produced through um, process manufacturing. Alright, so that is how you would, or that is what AX can do as far as um, mixed mode manufacturing, so you can have both uh, discrete manufacturing processes and process manufacturing processes in the same solution, um, as well as report against them, process them identically, and there's a lot less, um, there's a lot less going to the identical forms that have different function or that have the same functionality as you saw in uh, the previous version of the process. So that is all for today's session.
and uh, thank you for joining.